This week we'll talk about the difference between constant lights and flashes. Adorama TV presents Digital Photography One-on-One, -on -one, where we answer your questions. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Welcome to another episode of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. I'm Mark Wallace. Well, this week we've got a great question from Umjud, and Umjud asked, why do photographers use flash lighting instead of constant light sources? Flash seems unnatural to me. The photo doesn't represent what I'm seeing with my eyes. Well, that's a terrific question, and a lot of people have been asking that same question. What's the difference between a light that's always on or a constant light and a light that flashes or a strobe? And we're going to talk about that today. Now, the difference, though, there's uh, really two different types of strobes. There's uh, a speed light that goes on your camera or can be triggered off camera with a radio or an infrared light, and studio strobes. And I talked a lot about that in episode 54, about the difference between studio strobes and speed lights. We're not going to talk about those differences in this video because we've already done that. We're just going to put speed lights and strobes into one bucket, and that is lights that flash and then aren't always on. And we're going to compare those guys to lights that are always on that don't flash. And so really the question is, what is the difference between the two? Why would you use one over the other? And I think the question really uh, highlighted one thing, and that is that with always on lights, what you see is what you get, and with flash lights that flash, uh, what you see is not what you get necessarily. That's one big difference. And the other thing is uh, the price of those two things, the light modifiers that you can use, and all kinds of stuff. But it really comes down to two things that most photographers care about a lot. One is the power that those flashes or constant lights output. And the other is the ability to freeze motion. So let's take a closer look at that by hopping over to the studio. Well, let's start by talking about the difference in power output of constant lights and studio strobes. So before we start, let me just talk about how we have our studio set up here. One of the problems with showing any kind of lighting in a studio when we're shooting it for video is we have to actually light me and that messes up our lighting in the studio. So what we've tried to do here is really keep things simple and we have two lights that are illuminating me, but we've made sure that none of that light spills uh, behind me. In fact, all the light behind me is being uh, uh, lit up by this one hot light right here. This is an Airy 650 always on uh, hot light. And beside that light, we also have this light, and this is a studio strobe. It's a Profoto 1200 watt second Acute 2. And so we have both a studio strobe on one side and a hot light or always on light on the other side. And we'll be using those to illustrate the power output of strobes versus constant lights. So to help us out today, we have a model that you've seen before and she is terrific. Her name is Lachelle. Welcome to the show today, Lachelle. Um, and so she's gonna be helping us. So feels it back here to uh, your position. What we wanna do first is just show you a couple of things. So what I have is I've turned on this always on Fresnel and it's shining right on Lachelle's face. And I've already metered this using my built-in light meter on my camera and it meters at uh, an aperture value of f4 and a shutter speed of 100. So let me take a picture really quickly. So Lachelle look right at me. Beautiful, I love that. Okay, we have this shot and you can clearly see that the light is coming from this airy constant always on light and we've got shadows that are falling on the opposite side that are really hard and it's pretty obvious. Now one of the great things about always on lighting is that what you see is what you get so it's really easy to put that up there and sort of uh, make sure everything works. I can use the built-in meter on my camera and it's really easy to use. The bad thing, one of the bad things about it is you don't get much power out of that light and so if I wanted to shoot it like f11 or f16 I'd have to slow my shutter speed way down or I'd have to increase my ISO to get those shutter speeds it's just really not possible and we can't really freeze motion which we'll talk about a little bit later. On, uh, in contrast to that we have this 1200 watt second pro photo light and it has a lot of power we haven't even turned it all the way up we just have it sort of in the middle of its power output and I've already metered that and it meters at a shutter speed of 100 which uh, we can fudge a little bit if we wanted to. And we also metered that at an aperture value of 14. Now, if you're new to metering and all this stuff I've talked about, about using the internal light meter or using an external meter, we have a four part series on Adorama TV and that is episodes 25 through 28 of Digital Photography One-on-One. -on -one. It talks about all of that stuff. So metering modes, built-in light meters, an external meter, and even advanced metering. So if you're new to that, check out those four episodes. So we've already metered this. It's metered at an aperture value of 14. And what that means is now I can overpower all this ambient light. And to prove that, 
what I'm going to show is I'm, we're going to leave this light on, the one that we just shot with, and we're going to turn on our strobe, and I'm going to do that by turning on my pocket wizard here, and that's going to trigger that strobe. So when I take a picture, you can see that fires. And so let's check this out. So I'm going to take a picture. Let Sean look right at me. Beautiful. I love that. Okay. Now you can clearly see that the light is coming from the opposite side of the shell. And so the shadows are now on this side and we were able to completely overpower the lights that are on in this room using our much, much brighter flash. So big difference. A studio strobe has a lot more power. You can shoot at much smaller aperture openings. So F22 if you want or F14. A constant light, you see what you get, so it's easier to sort of see the light, but you're going to have to open up your aperture or increase your ISO because the power output is just not the same. So a big, big difference in power, and the advantage is studio strobes let you overpower ambient light. Well, there's another thing that's really important and a big difference between always-on lights and studio strobe, and that is the ability to freeze motion. So we're going to look at that next. Well, now that we know about power and how those differ between a constant light and a strobe, what we're going to talk about next is how you can freeze motion using a strobe, and it really works well. But before we do that, let's talk about some of the reasons why we uh, photographers like to use strobes to freeze motion and the problems that constant lights have when we're trying to really freeze things that are moving. So when you have an always-on uh, light, to freeze motion, you need a fast shutter speed, and unless your light is really bright, you just can't get that fast shutter speed. So uh, we have a, a 650-watt ARRI uh, right up here, and so it's a pretty bright light, but we're still shooting at an aperture value of 4 and a shutter speed of 100, which isn't really fast, even though, and we have our ISO at 200, so it's just not a really fast shutter speed. So to illustrate this and how we have some motion blur, we have Lachelle back here. She's got this little scarf she's going to wave around. So go ahead and start waving that around. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take a few pictures. So go ahead. There we go. A couple more. There we go. Awesome. Now, when we look at these, you can clearly see that the scarf is blurred. And that's because our shutter speed just isn't fast enough. Now, the other problem with this is uh, when we're shooting something like this, well, Lachelle is going to be moving back and forth. And so with an aperture value of 4, we might have focus issues as she's moving in and out. So normally we would want a, a smaller aperture opening, so something like maybe f8 or f10, and we just won't be able to do that with this light because then we'd have to slow our shutter speed down even more. So we could combat that by doing a few things. So we could increase our ISO. So I'm going to increase the ISO all the way up to 800, and then that allows us to shoot at a faster shutter speed. So I'm going to shoot at a shutter speed of 400. So that's two stops difference. So we have a faster shutter speed, but still we're stuck at f4. And if I opened, uh, close that shutter, I mean aperture down, and we have to slow our shutter speed down. You can see how this gets to be complicated. But let's take a look at what we get with uh, a little bit faster shutter speed here. So keep moving that around. There we go. Good. Good. Now when we look at this, even though it's a faster shutter speed, we still have motion blur. So we'd really have to get our shutter speed up to you know about a thousandth of a second or something. And with this light, we're just not going to be able to do that unless we really increase our ISO or we get it really close, you can see that we start having all kinds of issues. And so that's one reason people love strobes. So to show you the difference here, we have a really small strobe. This is a, a quantum flash and it's a portable strobe that I really like. I use it uh, a lot. And so what we're going to do here is we've already metered this. I'm going to change my camera back down to ISO 200. I'm going to change the shutter speed back down to 100. And then I'm going to put the aperture value at f10. And that's because that's how we metered this. So this is uh, much brighter, like we talked about earlier. I'm also going to change my color temperature to flash so it looks really nice and good. And then last but not least, I'm going to turn off this constant light. So we're just using our, our studio strobe here. And it's being triggered by the pocket wizard, so I need to make sure I turn that on. OK, now what we're going to do is Lydia's going to move that really fast. So move that around. Go ahead. Good, I'm going to take a couple more pictures, keep moving that, good, one more time, good. Now when we look at these pictures, you can clearly see that that scarf is absolutely still, it's totally frozen. Now the reason that's frozen, a really quick explanation of this, and we've talked about this in previous episode in much greater depth, but the, uh, the short explanation is this. The only light that the camera sees in this environment is the light that comes from the flash. And so to prove that, I can turn off my flash, and I'll take a picture. So move that around, and I'll take a picture. 
totally black on the back of the camera. So the only light that the camera sees is the light that's coming from the flash. And because the flash turns on and on, uh, on and off so quickly, it's actually the short duration of that light that's freezing the motion of the scarf. So the flash is turning on and off at about, I don't know, something like two thousandth of a second, something like that. So it really freezes that scarf. And that's the beauty of shooting with the strobe. It has a really short flash duration that you can do all kinds of things that you can't do with a constant light. You can really freeze the motion of your subject. So if you have something like an athlete jumping or a bicycler hopping off a ramp or a model that's moving around a lot, you can freeze all that motion with a very small flash unit. You don't have to have a lot of power. It's very portable and it's all good. Well, now that we know about the big differences between always on lights, constant lights, and strobes, let's talk about uh, sort of a laundry list of other differences, and we're just gonna hit these at a very high level so you have some information to help you make a decision on which one is right for you. So a strobe generally is more expensive. Constant lights are generally less expensive unless you get always on constant lights that are cool, called cool lights. Those are usually expensive. Strobes usually have more modifiers, things like reflectors and soft boxes and uh, the ability to shape lights, and constant lights usually have less. The color temperature is usually different between those two. So a flash is usually around 5200 or 5500 degrees Kelvin, and constant lights are generally 3200 degrees Kelvin. With the strobe, you'll need some kind of light meter to understand how to adjust the light. A constant light, you can use the built-in light meter on your camera. With the strobe, you're going to need less air conditioning and less power from the wall outlet than you will with constant lights. Constant lights take more electricity, they heat up, and so you're going to have to cool down your studio, and that's going to cost you more money. A strobe needs something to trigger it. It needs a cable or a pocket wizard or maybe a line of sight uh, trigger that's on your camera. It needs something to tell it to fire, whereas an always on light doesn't need anything. It's just always on. Well, there you have it at a very high level, the differences between constant lights and strobes. And one thing that I forgot to mention, and that is if you're shooting video, well, you need a constant light. It has to always be on. And so if that's the kind of photographer you are, where you're shooting stills and video, then you either need strobes and constant lights or just constant lights because you can't really shoot video with strobes unless you're doing some stop action work. So there you have it, the differences between constant lights and strobes. Now, if you have a question about photography or photography gear, please send it to me at askmark at adorama.com. And if you're curious about the gear that we used in this episode or links to other episodes, just zip over to the Adorama Learning Center and you'll see all of the goodness there. And you can click on links and go right to the gear and see more info about it. Well, thanks so much for joining us and I'll see you again next week. This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue. I'm Clapmaster Maurice. <laughs> I just swallowed coffee into my lungs. <laughs> that hurt. Mm. <laughs> Digital Photography One-on-One -on -one is written and produced by Snap Factory. For more information about our workshops, visit snapfactory.com.